everybody. My name is Shauna, and this is the American English Podcast. My goal here is to teach you the English spoken in the United States through common expressions, pronunciation tips, and interesting cultural snippets or stories. I hope to keep this fun, useful, and interesting. Let's do it. Welcome back. I hope you're having a nice day wherever you're at in the world. A while back, I asked you guys what you enjoy doing while listening to this podcast, and I received a ton of responses. Actually, the top five activities are exercising, commuting to work, cleaning house, cooking, or out walking, out with a dog or a cat. Not a cat, actually, but yeah, out walking. Whatever you're doing while listening, I just wanted to say congrats. You're listening to a podcast that is 100% in English. If you can understand this, hats off to you. As you probably know by now, every episode that is labeled as an expression episode has two parts. The expression part, part one, is always paired with a fun story about the United States. Usually it deals with society, culture, history. Sometimes it's about people. There is always an overlap in the theme for the week. In other words, the topic and the expression somehow go together. I like the association. When words and concepts are connected in some way, I think it's a great way to remember them. Today, you'll also see a theme. In part one, we'll talk about the common English expression, up in the air. In part two, I'll share the very odd story of a man named Larry Walters, who is more commonly known in the U.S. as Larry Lawn Chair. He became famous after taking flight in his lawn chair. That's right. (laughs) Larry tied himself to a chair in his backyard, attached a bunch of helium-filled balloons, and he went up in the air. He traveled. Today, we call this uncommon activity cluster ballooning, and Larry's flight inspired many others around the world to do it too. It's a very memorable story, I think, And I think you'll want to retell it to a friend after hearing. I'll be sure to share a lot of unique vocabulary and phrases as we go along. So be sure to stay tuned for part two. For now, let's do the first part of this two-part lesson. As usual, we'll start with a joke. Are you ready? Why are balloons so expensive these days? Do you know? It's the cost of inflation. (laughs) I'm fairly certain I don't need to explain this one, but since this is an English lesson, let's do it. Inflation has two meanings. I bet you're very familiar with this first one. In economics, it means the general increase of the price of goods and services over time. People constantly talk about inflation at the grocery store. Inflation is also the expansion or growth of an object when it is filled with gas or air. Before a party, you might inflate balloons or blow them up. Now, I don't think this is a rule, but I'd be tempted to use the verb to inflate when I'm using a helium tank and to blow up when I'm inflating them myself, so with my own lung power. But we use both of these verbs, right, to blow up and to inflate. Now, in regards to the joke, (laughs) the balloons are expensive because of the cost of inflation. So you might think of the economics meaning, right, because things are getting more expensive, it's more expensive in general, or because it costs something, there was a fee to inflate them, to blow them up. 
Let's hear the joke one more time. Why are balloons so expensive these days? It's the cost of inflation. Let's move on to the expression of the day, which is up in the air. We'll go through the definitions of the individual words first, and then we'll go through some examples. Up, up is a preposition, and it means at a higher position. Where is the balloon? Oh, it's not down here, it's up there. In, in is a preposition that means enclosed or surrounded by something else. My wallet is in my purse. So the walls of my purse are encompassing or surrounding my wallet. The is a definitive article. We use the to refer to things that have already been mentioned or it's clear as to what we're referring to. I love the lime sparkling water, but not the grape one. Air. According to Oxford languages, air is, quote, the invisible gaseous substance surrounding the earth, a mixture mainly of oxygen and nitrogen. We breathe air. Air is all around us. Once again, the expression for the day is up in the air. When something is literally up in the air, it means it is physically elevated off of the ground. So it's not touching the ground. Figuratively, so as an expression or as an idiom, up in the air means uncertain or undecided. We use this idiom in moments where a decision hasn't been made or finalized yet. Something, usually a plan, hasn't been settled. Various sources estimate that in the air has been around since the 1700s and that up in the air, so the expression as it is used today, was put to use around the early half of the 20th century, so in the early 1900s. The thing is no one can say exactly who created it or name a specific date. But we can, as, you know, intelligent human beings, uh, make an assumption as to why this idiom exists. Just think of a coin toss. When we need help deciding between two options, we might toss a coin. We throw it up in the air and let chance decide what option to choose. Option number one is heads. Option number two is tails. If the coin lands on heads, you go with option number one. If the coin lands on tails, you go with option number two. When the coin is up in the air, when it is mid-flight, nobody knows what it will land on. The plan of action is undecided. It is an unsettled matter. It hasn't been finalized yet. Now, that is the meaning of this expression. And I like this visual because it encompasses both that literal and figurative meaning. So I hope that association helps you recall the meaning of this expression too. In any case, let's go through some examples to hear how we can use up in the air in everyday conversation. Example number one, imagine you want to go on a trip to Europe but you don't know where exactly you want to go and when you want to go. Maybe flight prices will determine which city you'll visit first. If someone asks you where you're going, you can say, hmm, I'm not really sure. It's still up in the air. In other words, I haven't decided yet. It's unsettled. My plans are not finalized. My plans are still up in the air. Example number two, imagine you plan on visiting your parents this weekend, but suddenly a storm hits and you don't know whether you want to drive in the rain or if you'll drive at all. When your parents call you and ask when you plan on leaving, you can say, I don't really know yet. It's still up in the air. 
Maybe you want to wait until another weekend to visit. Or maybe you'll just wait for the storm to pass. You can't give them specifics because you don't even know, right? Everything is still up in the air. Your ETA is undetermined, unfinalized, unsettled. It's up in the air. Example number three. When you're about to graduate from high school in the United States, everybody and their mom wants to know what your plans are. Are you going to college? Where to? What are you going to study? Are you going to take some time off? What are your plans? There's a lot of pressure. Now let's imagine that you have some options. You can either take a year off to travel Europe or jump into a four-year degree program at either UCLA or UC Berkeley. They both accepted you. Now you have those options, but nothing is finalized. Your plans are still up in the air. In other words, they're still undecided. They aren't settled. They're still up in the air. And that's exactly what you can tell people when they ask you. Let's go ahead and do the pronunciation exercise. We'll start with the statement, it's all up in the air. Repeat after me. It's. It's all. It's all up in the air. It's all up in the air. Let's go through the conjugation. Repeat after me. My plans are up in the air. Your plans are up in the air. Her plans are up in the air. His plans are up in the air. Its plans are up in the air. Our plans are up in the air. Their plans are up in the air. Notice how up in the air sounds like one word, up in the air, up in the air, up in the air. None of those words are emphasized. The plans are what are emphasized here. It's okay to not know the answer to questions sometimes. Maybe we don't know the dates of our flights or plans after high school or wedding locations. Maybe we don't know when we'll buy a new house or a new car or when we'll move to a new city and start a new job. Maybe you want to move to the United States, but you don't know when that will be. In all of these situations that require more thought and more planning, you can say, I don't know, it's still up in the air. It's still undecided. I hope you enjoyed that episode. If you liked it, be sure to leave a review in Apple Podcasts or on Spotify. And if you would like the bonus material to learn more with each episode, be sure to sign up to premium content. You'll find links to that in the episode notes. I hope you're having a nice day. And until next time, bye. Thank you for listening to this episode of the American English Podcast. Remember, it's my goal here to not only help you improve your listening comprehension, but to show you how to speak like someone from the States. If you want to receive the full transcript for this episode, or you just want to support this podcast, make sure to sign up to premium content on AmericanEnglishPodcast.com. Thanks and hope to see you soon.